there's this lab's kind of cool. We're going to combine that same ramp that we did for projectile motion. Remember the ball in the cup? We had to try to get it to land in the cup. You probably already even remember what the velocity was coming off of this ramp. It might still be the same one, okay? Probably you're going to do it over again just to make sure and let that ball roll down the ramp about 10 times, land it somewhere, measure that distance, measure this distance, use that distance, find the time in the air, distance divided by time is the velocity coming off the ramp. Good review for the final. Meanwhile, we're going to do something different about this lab. Check this out. We're going to have the ball start here, roll down the hill. Now, if this ball had zero friction, then this would be a really easy question that I should have done a few chapters before. What kind of energy does it have up there? Gravitational potential energy due to the height. What kind of energy would it turn into? Kinetic energy when it leaves the ramp. So therefore, MGH, H is the height of the ramp from the table. Actually, more accurately, from the bottom of the ball to the bottom of the ball is the change in height. M, the mass of the ball, times G, 9.8, times the change in height in meters should give you the loss in potential. And what's it going to all turn into, if life was perfect? Kinetic, 1 half M V squared. So, theoretically, we could say MGH equals 1 half M V squared. Uh, bring the 2 over, uh, cancel the masses, take the square root of it, and you got uh, 2 g h square rooted see i did that one in my head potential turns into kinetic the, kin the velocity at the bottom should be equal to the square root of 2 g h check out and see if i'm right about that all right but life isn't real so we're into this chapter 12 thing going on here where we're learning about moments of inertia so the name of this lab is rolling down the ramp ball roll on ramp okay something like that and this one is rolling what would cause a ball to not just stay at rest rotationally and just slide down the ramp and have all that potential turn into nothing but kinetic? The answer to that is friction. Friction makes it start rolling. So when you read this chapter, look very carefully at what's going on here. Some of that potential energy is not going to turn into kinetic. Some of that potential energy is going to turn into rotational kinetic energy. So in the book Night, third edition, on uh, page 318, there's actually like a, a table where you have the different shapes and what their moment of inertia is. So which one is this ball? And the answer is, it's a sphere. Okay? So look up at the moment of inertia of a sphere and use that because the equation you're going to read about in any book that you find is the rotational kinetic energy equals one half I, which is the moment of inertia for a sphere, it's not in, in the chart, one half I times omega squared. Remember what omega was? Rotational velocity. Angular velocity squared. Sounds a lot like the other equation, one half mv squared, but we have another kind of kinetic energy, one half I omega squared. So now mgh is going to turn into kinetic and rotational kinetic. So we aren't going to get the square root of 2GH. We're going to get a number at the bottom a little slower than 2GH because some of that energy is hiding in the spin, not hiding in the sideways motion. Get it? So if you actually do this equation right and do MGH, measure everything carefully, and you calculate what the velocity should be here, then compare it to what you get with the projectile motion that you did in the ball and cup lab. That's all this lab is, is to make sure that you're reading this chapter enough where you know that the conservation of energy now works with rotational motion also. That a pool ball that's hit and spinning not only has translational kinetic energy, but there's energy stored in the spin motion as well as the sideward motion. So that's all there is to the lab. Let's update one more time. You're going to find the velocity coming down the ramp using the book and the measurements so that the potential turns into kinetic plus rotational kinetic. You're going to get the velocity of the ball leaving the ramp. But then you're going to do the whole projectile motion thing again. 
and make sure that the velocity is close. Do percent error, uh, compare it, write a little discussion. The error might be really high, don't freak out. There's friction here, so you can tell what the major cause of error is. All right, it may be not rolling all the way, but it is definitely making noise. And that means some of the energy is leaving me and going into sound energy and heat. So you know this is not gonna be perfect, but seriously, try to do it as best as you can. Even if the error is high, you're gonna learn what I want you to learn out of this. So have some fun with it. It's kind of a great review for the final, but it's also a great way of making the book stuff come real to you because potential is gonna turn into kinetic and rotational. And that's it. Go to it.